Hi, I'm John Hart, and welcome back to Mr. America Hart. Ah, right, what a week we've had, huh? What a week. Um, usually, I'm not that guy, uh, the YouTuber, who's like right on the cutting edge of all of this, you know, breaking news and, you know, new topics and all of that, uh, new trends even. Uh, I'm, I'm usually kind of catching it on the back end, uh, <laughs> and... It's just not been my way. However, uh, in this one case, one of the uh, most recent subjects has come up in YouTube land. Um, I've had quite a few emails as well as comments in, in my videos regarding uh, Dr. Mike Isratel's uh, video that he did recently about 52 sets being optimal for muscle growth. And, um, and I'm just going to come out right out the gate and say, and he... You know, he even indicated somewhat in some of his comments, I think, in the comment section of his video, that uh, the, the, the thumbnail, the 52 sets, was, you know, obvious. It's obvious. It's a little bit clickbaity. I mean, it is. It makes you want to know, uh, should I be doing 52 sets to grow as much as possible? So, yeah, there's that, okay? But I wanted to cover um, three main, five, five main points uh, on this video that he did. Uh, he was doing it with another um, soon-to-be PhD, which they said that by the time this video came out, uh, he, he will have been a PhD. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. However, he works for Brad Schoenfeld, and we all know Brad Schoenfeld, uh, the hypertrophy expert. So um, Dr. Mike interviewed him. Uh, I watched the entire video, actually, when it first came out. It just hit my feed on YouTube. So I just watched it with interest, actually. And um, I didn't even need to rewatch it because as they were doing the video, as they were doing the interview, uh, there were these points that popped out in my mind. And so I'm going to share them with you. So it's a pretty easy run through for me. Uh, so number one, uh, there's some things I really liked and some things I kind of questioned about the, uh, uh, the way that they did the study that they did on uh, this high volume number of sets and how it created so much more growth than doing standard conventional training. Uh, number one is, I don't know uh, if you even question it. I did. I don't know the limitations of these studies. They all seem like they're very, very short term. Uh, eight weeks in general. Uh, that's, I'm giving you about an average. Eight weeks seems to be an average. Six to 12 in that zone. But they all seem, seem to be fairly short term. And all of you all know, most of my subscribers do know, uh, and any of you who have been returning to my channel to see any of the videos that I've done, that I always think long term. So uh, long term, however, however, uh, I do want to point out that my long term thinking, as in years, decades down the road, how are you training? Uh, I do realize that it's necessary for you to have certain periods of specialization to push, to push for some extra size when you're highly motivated, dedicate a certain amount of time to a certain routine, uh, maybe one uh, sort of along the lines of what they were talking about in that video. Uh, I know, John, you're going off the rails. No, I'm not. Bear with me. Listen. Uh, first of all, let's go over the points that I had. That was sort of an extra bonus material point right there. Uh, number one is, is I really, really liked that the uh, designers of that study used experienced lifters. So for once, in my mind, for once, we're talking about guys who have experience in the gym. Uh, they were studying actual experienced lifters who could squat. That's number one, experienced lifters. Number two, who could squat at least three wheels, 315 pounds, uh, you know, in their normal workouts. Now, why is this relevant? Well, it eliminates newbie gains, okay? Uh, a lot of the studies that have been done usually just you know, usually, a lot of the time, take subjects who are total noobs. They've never worked out properly. They give them an intense workout to do, and suddenly, ba-boom, they blow up and they grow. Well, of course they do, because that's what a newbie does. You give a, a newbie, someone new to bodybuilding or to weight training, practically any kind of routine, practically, and they will grow. How long that lasts? Questionable. How much they gain, questionable, but they will grow. Tendency is they will grow. Um, 
So my first two points was experienced lifters. Number two, 315 at least on this squat. Now, why squat? Why did they mention that? Because the study was a squat specialization program, basically. They were studying the effects of increasing steadily, week by week by week, uh, the volume of the amount of work given on those quads, on these lifters. And so we're talking about actual workouts. We're not talking about just squats. It was mainly squats used as a parameter. But then the numbers of sets of exercises, the total numbers, ramped up at the beginning of the study from in the 20s, 20 sets. It wasn't per body part. It was 20 sets for quads. Okay? So that's really important you catch that. It was a specialization routine, which is my number three point. Uh, so when you do a specialization routine, it's understood that you're not really doing anywhere near the same volume for the rest of your body. So two workouts per week they did on quads, and those workouts started in the 20s and ramped on up week by week by week until they peaked at 52 sets of quads. Now, um, that in four, I should say, four most people, experienced lifters, who weren't used to the increase over the short term, and yes, uh, 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 with a, an address to some of their nutritional needs, increasing their food slightly, training that Intensely, we're assuming experienced lifters who are training to failure or close to failure, and then they are doing such a radical increase in volume over a short period of time. I mean, it's a linear jump. Doing that, uh, their body is going to adapt in the short term, and it will do it, especially when we're talking about uh, not trying to do it with all the rest of the body parts. So you're not training your back just as hard with just as many sets or just as much of a linear increase week to week to week to week. So if you kept the volume low on all of the other body parts and specialized on those quads, then yeah, in fact, these guys, their quads grew. Okay. So that's pretty awesome because, uh, wow. I mean, uh, a great case for specialization, which in fact, Dr. Mike did make near the end of the video, uh, I agreed highly with him that, uh, you know, any type of specialized routine is going to involve usually uh, more volume on that body part than the rest of the body. And that in and of itself will permit that body part that you're specializing in. It could be something that maybe historically for you has been a weak body part. So maybe your quads have been weak. Well, now you have a routine, that study, that you might want to try and see what happens, you know, over the course of the eight weeks, however long it was, uh, it was about eight weeks, ramping up that volume on those quads, two workouts a week, and keep everything down. I mean, they didn't say in the interview exactly how many exercises or sets they did for all the other body parts. But I really would assume it was very little. You don't need much when you're squatting that much. Uh, everybody and their grandmother knows that squats in general are the big hit exercise, the king, pretty much, we could say, of all exercises. So squatting alone, if you did a decent amount of sets of squats a couple times a week for eight weeks, that's going to be whew, a major hit to the system overall your resources as well as your nervous system. So uh, it's going to take a bit to recover and to grow from that. So I really do like that they did acknowledge it was a specialization routine. So a couple things I'm going to question though. Okay. So I gave you all of my likes. I like that uh, it was experienced lifters. They, they were pretty strong, having a good history with squats, lifting over 315 in the squat in their regular workouts. And then it was a specialization routine. I really like that. Uh, and by the way, a little asterisk right there. Another historical fact. Uh, Dr. Ellington Darden, in his well-written book, The New High Intensity Training, I'll put a picture up here and I'll put you a link down below in my video description. Uh, that book that he wrote, 
he had specialization routines for body parts using high intensity training. And even though this video here is not about high intensity training, I know a bunch of you who are watching this are interested in it. And I'll direct you to that and um, I'll get you the cheapest link I have down below so you can get, uh, get that book for the least amount of money. Just go hit that link down below and you'll get it, okay? Um, he gives great routines for every body part specialization. So whichever ones are weakest on you, you might want to go ahead and take a look at those routines, see if they make sense to you. Uh, they're very intense, but the same principle applies. When he applied those specialization routines, he cut back on all the other volume of all the other body parts. It was almost like doing maintenance on the rest of the body while you're doing this specialization. And I would assume the same thing has happened in that study that Mike Isertel uh, was pointing out uh, with his partner on that video, uh, his interviewee, I should say. Um, interesting is that, yeah, yeah, uh, there would have to be maintenance on all the rest of the other body parts. And specifically, because they're experienced lifters, uh, most of them are looking at gaining fractional results year to year anyway, if they're natural. Okay, which brings me to my first. Uh, very important point. And by the way, those guys, that point that I'm about to make, they said in the description of that study that they were natural lifters. Okay. Um, I didn't see any mention of drug testing. So that's the part. You know, y'all know that uh, when it comes to people claiming that they're natural, that they're drug free, a good drug test would really help. Okay. Uh, a weekly drug test would really, really help to just solidify that we are talking about natural lifters. Uh, I'm not saying they weren't natural. I'm just saying it would really, really help. And if there was a notation that I missed regarding that study uh, and the description of the study, then forgive me. But it sure sounded like they said they are natural and um, natural experienced lifters that could squat over 315. So if they are then they are exceptional, okay? Because as you know, a lot of natural lifters out there, squatting over 315, you're pretty good. You're pretty serious. And without a drug test, uh, it becomes questionable, uh, especially if you're up in those 400s, 400 plus, and you're regularly using those in your workouts. So, uh, yeah, I just question the naturalness of anybody doing these studies. And drug tests, just so that you know, they cost on average to the, uh, to the promoters of natural bodybuilding contests. I was one for years. Uh, on average, between 40, 40 to $60 per test. So run a study, and if you have the funds for it, you know, it'll cost you in eight weeks if you drug tested them every week. That's you know, eight times six, about $480, $500 what you're spending per participant to verify their naturalness if you were to test them every week, okay? So there you go. Um, that's my one question. The other big question I had is uh, that progression, starting off at 20, uh, in the 20s, as far as the volume of numbers of sets for the quads, starting off in the 20s and ramping up to the 50s at the end, uh, I question, well, it, what about starting off at the absolute lowest. And, and why was 20 chosen? Why was 20 to 50 chosen? Uh, that's questionable to me. I don't know. Uh, and how high could they go? That's the other big question I had. So these are just questions rolling around in my head. Uh, very interesting. Very interesting. I want to tell you. I may seem like, you know, for a high-intensity guy that I'm, I'm not – you know, ooh, all emotional and saying, ah, it's a bunch of crap and that doesn't work and all that. No, obviously it worked. Obviously they measured them. Okay. So they had hypertrophy, they had growth, uh, unless the guys conducting the study were lying for whatever purposes they had. I don't know. Uh, the fact is, is yeah, it worked. So I, I you know, as we, as we <laughs> believe all things, okay, I'm going to run with, I'm going to believe all things on that one. Okay. And just say, all right. So they were natural. Uh, they were experienced, and yes, uh, it worked. Okay, so it's kind of a cool study, to be honest. Um, short term, yet again, but a cool study. And uh, like I say, being a high intensity guy, uh, I'm sure some of y'all out there uh, who come from the, the hit community, uh, I'm sure you know 
you get upset about such things for some reason. I don't know. It's not necessary. I mean, it's, obviously, it's a fact. These guys did something, a good study. Maybe all, you know, from the hit community, maybe you need to do a study on some of the training and, uh, and gather up some people and get some PhDs to run it. You know, that would be really interesting. I know that uh, Dr. Darden did a great job in all of his books of tracking and, and training people and, you know, new, the new high-intensity training being one of them. Uh, but he's done, man, dozens of books on, that, on, on training people and getting results. But mostly it was with just one or two subjects in the course of, you know, a short time period. And, and again, those guys weren't drug tested, uh, as far as I recall. In all, any of his books, I've never seen the results of a drug test. So anyway, my thoughts, these are just my initial thoughts on it. Makes you question. But like Dr. Mike, like Mike, I'm going to say this to you too, just like he did at the end of his video uh, when he was questioning the PhD candidate uh, that he was interviewing. He said, hey, I really like that this points to specialization. Do you think it could be a good case for specialization, for getting some weaker body parts to grow or to get just a body part to grow because you want it to grow? And, and as an experienced lifter, we all know that as you get past those first five years of training, man, you're scraping. You're scraping for every pound of muscle every year. And if anything, year in, year out, as much as nobody wants to admit it, you're, you're pretty much maintaining a lot of that muscle as opposed to continually growing, all right? And what hope do you have? Well, this gives hope to do a kind of a routine where you're specializing on a body part. And who knows? Maybe that is the answer. Uh, occasionally doing a routine like that mixed in in between your high-intensity training, but it's something to look at. And again, I like how Dr. Mike pointed that out near the end. You guys can tell. Why would it even come up in my feed? It's because, yeah, I subscribe to his channel. Yeah, I like listening to some of this stuff. I like some of the, uh, the studies that they've done and some of the uh, subject matter that he covers, you know? So I enjoy some of his videos. So that's it. And, uh, and yeah, at the end of that video, I don't know. I, think, I don't know if the PhD candidate was joking around or anything about the, the hit guys, but he seemed to have, of course, some kind of a bias towards the hit guys. He probably was joking around. I don't really know. But uh, I'm all right with it, man. And, you know, look, let's put it this way. First one to get offended loses. How's that sound? <laughs> so anyway, before you go, look, um, first of all, off to my left. Well, I, let me not go there yet. Before you go, uh, you'll notice some of the cool new shirts I've been wearing lately. Go to my website. Let me direct you there, MrAmericaHeart.com, and you'll see I have some, oh, cool new gear up. Uh, some of y'all will enjoy it in particular, and some maybe not so much, but they're cool clothes, and they're all soft and comfortable, and they fit just right. Uh, I pretty much don't put anything up on my store unless I have bought it, tried it, wore it. I have a woman wear it too, so I make all unisex gear and uh, uh, ships anywhere in the world, okay? So there you go. Uh, now, get down to business. Off to my left before you go. You're going to see a disc pop up. That is the subscribe button for my channel. Please give that thing a tap and let YouTube know that you're liking my videos. Down below, off to your left, you're going to see a thumbs up button. Please tap it and turn it blue and let YouTube know that you want to be notified when my next videos are coming up. Thank you. I appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.